The idea of discovering ancient human ancestors captivated scientists in the early 20th century. Among the many bold theories that emerged during this time period was the concept of Homo pampeanus, an ancient human species native to Argentina's Pampas region. The supposed species was an early ancestor of modern humans, living alongside extinct megafauna, like giant ground sloths and saber-toothed cats. Homo pampeanus had anatomical characteristics that linked it to both modern humans and earlier hominins, establishing it as an important transitional species. The fossil remains were thought to date back up to one million years. However, subsequent research and re-examination of these findings revealed that the fossils attributed to Homo pampeanus were misidentified. They were actually ancient Native American fossils less than 10,000 years old. As a result, the idea of Homo pampeanus as a distinct ancient human species has been widely discredited. But, could some of these ancient fossils reveal Neanderthal and Denisovan characteristics in ancient South Americans? A recent study, which looked at ancient human fossils from Panama and South America, discovered Denisovan, Neanderthal and Australasian genetic clues in the remains of one Panamanian fossil. Interestingly, the genomes of a 1,000-year-old human fossil from Panama, known as PAPV173, contained more Denisovan ancestral genes than Neanderthal-specific genes. Most humans today, however, have more Neanderthal DNA than Denisovan DNA. In terms of total non-sapiens DNA, this Panamanian fossil had 80% Denisovan DNA and only 20% Neanderthal DNA. The increased Denisovan ancestry appears to correspond with an increase in ancestry from the indigenous peoples of Papua New Guinea and Australia, known as Australasians. But when did this Australasian heritage arrive in the Americas, and how much Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA did these migrations carry? Surprisingly, there is no evidence of the Australasian signal in ancient North American fossils implying that early Australasians arrived in the Americas by crossing the Pacific Ocean. There is a vast Pacific Ocean separating Australasia from the Americas, and we still don't know how these ancestral genetic signals emerged in Central and South America while leaving no trace in North America. Australasian ancestry in the Americas is perplexing because it has been documented for isolated fossil samples, separated by vast distances in location and time, with no discernible pattern. While the study's findings shed new light on the migrations and ancestry of these early inhabitants, they also suggest that the region's genetic history is much more complex than scientists previously believed. As stated, the sample from Panama had significant amounts of Denisovan ancestry, which is unusual except in Papua and Australia, as well as similar levels of Neanderthal DNA to most Eurasians, around 2%. Moreover, a new study in communications biology discovered Denisovan and Neanderthal introgressed haplotypes in a Central American population with significant Native American heritage. A Neanderthal haplotype linked to increased nasal height is present in the ancient genome, suggesting that these individuals had taller nasal cavities. While Neanderthal introgression in the region is not directly linked to the Denisovan lip thickness haplotype, it does suggest that early modern humans had archaic DNA in this region which may have influenced facial morphology in ways that overlapped with Denisovan contributions in later populations. Lip morphology, particularly thickness, is another facial trait affected by archaic introgression. A science advances study discovered a Denisovan haplotype that influences lip thickness in Native Americans. This haplotype, found in 34% of the samples, increases upper lip protrusion and the lip thickness ratio while decreasing lower lip thickness. The ancient genomes of the 40,000-year-old Tian Yan man from China and the 34,000-year-old Skalkit woman from Mongolia both contain Neanderthal and Denisovan introgressed DNA in regions associated with high elevation adaptation, nose shape and possibly lip shape. Skalkit woman is related to ancient North Eurasians and Paleo-Siberians, both ancestors of Native Americans. Tian Yan man is also related to the Ong tribe of the Andaman Islands, Papuan and Australian Aboriginals and Native Americans, implying a fascinating connection. The Panamanian bottleneck hypothesis is important in understanding human migration to South America. The narrow land corridor and difficult environment impose genetic constraints, limiting the number of individuals who made it through and shaping the genetic diversity of South American indigenous populations.
Genetic evidence from ancient and modern DNA suggests a single migration wave with a population bottleneck, followed by rapid expansion into South America. A genetic bottleneck occurs when a population is drastically reduced in size, limiting the genetic diversity passed down to future generations. The difficult passage through Panama created a bottleneck, with only a small group of people successfully making the journey southward. This would explain why indigenous populations in South America have lower genetic diversity than their North American counterparts. The Isthmus of Panama is one of the most difficult terrains in the world to migrate. This narrow stretch of land, only 100 kilometers, 60 miles wide, is the only natural land connection between North and South America. Unlike North America's open plains or the Andes arid highlands, Panama is a land of swamps, dense rainforests, and rugged mountains where survival necessitates significant adaptation. For early Native Americans, it was a formidable challenge to cross. Imagine standing on the edge of a vast jungle, the dense rainforest stretching endlessly in front of you, the air thick with humidity, and the sounds of unseen creatures echoing through the trees. Imagine yourself as one of the first humans to reach this location thousands of years ago, confronted with an impenetrable wall of green. What would you do? This was the challenge that early Native American populations faced as they migrated southward through a geographical bottleneck that had far-reaching genetic and cultural consequences for the people of the Americas. Torrential rains, high humidity, and an abundance of insects, including mosquitoes, made life in this region extremely difficult. The jungle, teeming with jaguars, venomous snakes, and other predators, also posed a constant threat. These natural hazards slowed migration, limited population sizes, and resulted in isolated communities. Because of these geographic barriers, only a small number of people successfully crossed into South America, influencing the genetic diversity of future populations. Evidence suggests that humans arrived in South America very quickly, possibly around 25,000 years ago, with sites such as Monte Verde in Chile, indicating a surprisingly early presence. This raises the question of how migration occurred, whether via coastal routes along the Pacific coastline or an overland corridor, both of which would have required passing through Panama. Few early sites have been discovered in Panama due to preservation issues in the humid tropical environment, but genetic evidence suggests that populations did not stay for long in the region. Instead, they appear to have passed through relatively quickly, supporting the notion of a migration bottleneck rather than long-term settlement. Founder effects, a phenomenon in which a small initial group forms a new population, exacerbated the genetic impact. As groups dispersed and settled in new parts of South America, they brought with them only a fraction of their ancestors' genetic diversity, genetic drift, or random fluctuations in gene frequencies, has shaped these populations over time, resulting in distinct genetic signatures across the continent. Recent genomic studies back up this hypothesis, revealing that South American indigenous groups have strong genetic ties to a small ancestral population that passed through the bottleneck in Panama. The 1,000-year-old PAPV-173 fossil is a link to these ancient migrants. A genetic bottleneck occurs when a population size is dramatically reduced, reducing genetic diversity in future generations. If only a small number of people made it through Panama to South America, they would have carried only a subset of the genetic variation found in their northern ancestors. In fact, Recent genetic studies using ancient DNA and modern indigenous genomes suggest a single wave of migration into South America. The most common mitochondrial haplogroups exhibit patterns that suggest a population passing through a bottleneck before rapidly expanding across the South American continent. One notable recent study, Genomic Evidence for Ancient Human Migration Routes Along South America's Atlantic Coast, examined ancient DNA from remains discovered in Panama, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, and Uruguay. The findings revealed that these populations descended from a single migratory wave that passed through Central America, supporting the notion that Panama served as a bottleneck. While Panama's physical challenges played an important role in shaping migration, the climate would have been an equally powerful force. The Younger Dryas, 
a dramatic cooling event that occurred between 12,900 and 11,700 years ago transformed environments throughout the Americas. Temperatures dropped, ice sheets grew, and megafauna populations that had once thrived in North America began to decline. This abrupt climate shift had far-reaching implications for human survival and migration patterns. In North America, cooling resulted in increased aridity in some areas and harsher conditions elsewhere. Many large mammal species, including mammoths, mastodons, and giant ground sloths, began to disappear. As a result, some human groups would have been forced to migrate south in search of more stable conditions, hastening their journey through Panama and into South America. Indeed, the timing of the Younger Dries is consistent with archaeological evidence of early human settlements in South America, implying that this event influenced these movements. Once in South America, humans encountered vastly different ecosystems, ranging from the high-altitude Andes to the tropical Amazon. Because of Panama's genetic bottleneck, these early settlers brought with them only a limited set of genetic adaptations. However, their ability to quickly adapt to new environments demonstrates the resilience and ingenuity of early Native Americans. One of the most contentious issues in the study of early human migration through the Americas is whether people travelled primarily along coastal routes or inland through rainforests and highlands. Some researchers believe that coastal migration was the dominant strategy because it provided access to abundant marine resources and more navigable terrain. Others claim that groups travelled overland through Panama, enduring harsh conditions before spreading throughout South America. If coastal migration was the primary route, it would explain why some coastal South American populations share genetic ancestry with ancient North American coastal populations. However, Panama's archaeology indicates that at least some inland migration took place, as evidenced by archaeological sites discovered deeper within the continent. Regardless of the precise route, the genetic evidence is clear. A small founding population passed through Panama, leaving an indelible mark on the genetic diversity of South American indigenous groups. The genetic bottleneck in Panama had far-reaching consequences for culture, language and technological development in addition to population genetics. Cultural innovations and complex social structures may have taken longer to develop in smaller populations because there were fewer people to share and refine new ideas. Despite these constraints, early South American societies thrived, producing some of the most advanced civilizations in world, such as Tiwanaku. Early Native Americans' journey through the Isthmus of Panama was more than just a physical migration. It was a transformative event that shaped the Americas' genetic, cultural, and ecological histories. The geographical bottleneck of the Darien Gap, combined with climatic upheaval, forced a small group of migrants into South America where they would eventually populate the entire continent. Their legacy lives on in the genetic makeup of modern indigenous groups and the archaeological record of ancient Native American civilizations. As we discover more evidence through genetic research and archaeology, new questions arise. Were there several migration waves through Panama, or was it a single, defining event? How did different groups adjust to the various environments they encountered in South America? Each new discovery helps us better understand the incredible journey that shaped the first Americans and ultimately our own shared history. Future archaeological and genetic discoveries will help us better understand this critical migration event. Human migration is a story of resilience, adaptation and survival despite overwhelming odds. The population bottleneck in Panama was more than just an impediment. It was a crucible that shaped the genetic and cultural identities of those who passed through it. These findings also highlight the role of Neanderthal and Denisovan introgression in shaping facial morphological traits, which may have been further selected for in Native American ancestors. However, the exact impact on ancient individuals is unknown, as no direct facial reconstructions or nasal measurements from their remains are available in the studies. And remember, we are all Americans, whether you live in North, Central or South America. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share this video.